This past week had two major events on, the Abu Dhabi Formula 1 Grand Prix Championship decider and more importantly, the Logitech G Challenge semi-finals. The Logitech G Challenge is an event organised in partnership with McLaren where drivers would fight for prize money and experiences valued at up to 350,000 Australian dollars. The big prizes come in the finals in the middle of January, but today our focus is on the Asia Pacific semi-finals where the top 10 in points would walk away with 1400 Australian dollars at the end of the night. Rewinding back a few months, I had to finish on the podium in one of the five qualifying rounds held over the past five months to qualify for these semi-finals. I chose to do my event in round two at Suzuka, where I would manage to qualify a fantastic fourth in the world in the time attack before putting the car on pole position in the main race against one of Australia's quickest open wheel drivers in Chris Owen. I'm mentioning all of this because I got pretty lucky that race one for the Asia Pacific semi-finals took place at Suzuka. Qualifying in the semis was extremely close. I was able to put in a lap to stay tenth and a half shy of second place on the grid, but such was the competitive nature of this field that this meant we ended up down in sixth place. We were a little bit cautious into the final chicane on our fastest lap not to pinch a break and throw it all away, and that by itself may have been enough to cost us a grid slot on the first two rows of the grid. We were well inside the top 10 though, meaning we just had to hold position in the race and not do anything too crazy. These cars are a complicated beast to launch off the line, so we decided to take it a little more cautiously on the launch compared to some other drivers around us. Thankfully though, this proved absolutely to be the right call as all hell broke out behind with a multi-car pileup off the line. This left us with a substantial gap behind and from there I was able to relax a lot more and just take things a lot more conservatively. I was behind Chris Owen who as mentioned before is a fantastic open wheel driver and Luke Bannister who was very familiar with this car from the E1 GP series that is run by ex Formula 1 driver Alex Jung. I knew I was in good company so I focused on keeping the car on the road and staying in their draft to the end. There were many opportunities to go for a move and challenge for 4th place or even higher, but the risk versus reward just didn't add up. So in the end, I would settle for a pretty quiet position 6, but these were excellent points on the board for me and gave me a healthy buffer if things went wrong in the second of the two races. Race 2 is where things would get much spicier. We were still a bit on the cautious side throughout our qualifying lap but overall I would hook things up a lot nicer around the Hockenheim circuit, managing to make it an all Alters Esports second row of the grid in qualifying alongside my teammate James Scott. We knew this was a great spot to be in, as a brilliant slipstreaming opportunity into the hairpin is at the very start of the lap, so we could potentially pounce on the leaders from here. Off the start, we got a great initial launch to rocket past James and latch onto the top two. Brilliant move there, but he's going to be under some severe pressure down in towards that hairpin. Bo Alba up to P3. James Scott then down into P4. Ibrahim, though, he may be looking to make a move here on Jared, but look at Bo Alba. Bo Alba's going to box in three wide. Down in towards the hairpin we go. We got a double draft off of both cars as expected, but it's at this point I had to remind myself to play the long game. I thought about sending a deep under brakes around the outside of the two of them just for a moment there, but eventually I did back out which I'm glad I did as the two continued to cross over one another into the next breaking zone too, which started getting far too risky on the opening lap for my liking. And then, as I had a gut feeling, it eventually all went wrong. Jared Sirkowicz would make a mistake out of the stadium section and looped it around in front of the entire field and scattering many of us onto the grass. My two years in the iRacing Rallycross World Championship served me well here as we skated out the other side in second place. Many of us were fortunate to get away with only a slowdown penalty though, as it could have been so much worse. This left current leader Mohamed Ibrahim and me to ourselves, and my plan was to just sit in his draft and roll around in position number two, collecting the points. But in the turbulent air on just lap two, I broke at my regular breaking point at the hairpin only for the car to lock up almost immediately. I battled hard to try and unlock the tyre and get it to rotate again, but we couldn't quite pull it up in time and were very lucky to not go straight into the back of the race one winner. That cost us the draft and put us back into a big train of cars behind us before things would go even worse. 
Fortunate. That was Bo Albert. That's Bo Albert. This is live. It's not a replay. And suddenly, Sirkovic has a little bit of a lifeline. A huge pile up behind him. That's a minimum of three cars off the track and out of the race. Possibly a fourth and a fifth as well. That was Bo Albert. We would make an identical mistake to what Jared had done earlier in the race and lose it on the exit curbing on the stadium section. There is a pretty rough drop where the curb finishes, and as we put the wide rear tyre over that curb, it lit up the car as a bit of a one tyre fire wheel spin moment, and it was totally unrecoverable. Once it had snapped, it was absolutely gone. We were fortunate not to get collected at an only half spin, but this meant the rest of the field got pretty split up towards the end of the race. After the half spin, our tyres were severely overheated. I took it easy to bring the tyres back down to a more regular operating window, but I had fallen down to fourth place at this point. Funnily enough, now with a considerable margin to the chasing pack, so in a weak sense, my mistake had actually made life a lot easier on me. Eventually, as I was managing tyres and just generally taking it easy, we got caught and passed by Jaden Ladick in the dying laps, to which I put up no fight. I was just content to secure my spot in the finals at this stage. In an event of this structure, it's essential to know which battles to fight for and which ones to let go. Despite the driving error early on in the race at Hockenheim, I feel as if I drove as was needed, fast enough to be in the top 10, but not pushing on for anything more. The reward just wasn't there, first or second, ninth or tenth, or somewhere in between, it didn't matter. Just scoring that top 10 was all that was needed. The finals take place in the third week of January, and all competitors will be using the Logitech G923 True Force wheel, so it will be a totally even playing field. My inexperience in these cars has meant that I've played it a bit smarter rather than fast in the qualifiers and semi-finals, but in the next phase of competition, it's all about maximum attack and going for the win. Let's see what we can manage.